Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka has condemned the dethronement of Mohammed Sanisi II as Emir of Kanu, labeling the incident as a gross abuse of power. Expressing his views in a piece on Thursday, Shoinka said that Sanusi's removal showed that the knot was not ready to embrace the fruit of modern way of life. Sanisi, a former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, was ousted from the throne on Monday by the Kanu state government. He is currently taking refuge at Ewa, a small town in Nasrawa state where he was banished to. Speaking on the situation, Shoeke said that the removal of Sanusi was a huge loss to the North, who could have benefited from his wealth of knowledge as a seasoned economist to develop the region. Shoeke said, what a pity. Ganduje lacked friends who could have saved him from himself. As one can acknowledge certain valued elements in traditional institutions, the man he thinks he has humiliated has demonstrated that he is one of the greatest reformers even of the feudal order. Joining us live in the studio is legal practitioner Bennett Oniga. Thank you for joining us. We also have joining us via telephone, Joe Wokedi, also a legal practitioner. Thank you, Joe, for joining us. I thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. The deposed Emir has made good his threat and he has gone uh, to um, the Federal High Court in Abuja seeking an order directing his release. Help us understand the legal basis uh, for challenging the banishment. I, I come to you, Joe. Yes. Um, yeah, hello. Okay, um, what's the legal basis for the banishment? Please explain to us. Uh, it's outright um, breach of the Constitution with respect to the fundamental rights, Chapter 4 of the Constitution of 1999, Constitution has amended. Um, the right of fair hearing is a right that is guaranteed in the Constitution and must be given to anybody accused of committing any offense or alleged to have committed any offense. And that wasn't um, given to the Emir of Kano, the post Emir of Kano. He was never tried. He was never allowed to be had. So that outwardly contravenes section 36 that stipulated that fair hearing is sine qua non for any determination of issues where somebody is accused of having committed any offense. So he was not given that a fair hearing. And then the, 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 the culture or the tradition of the Emirates is also runs contrary <clears throat> to the provisions of the constitution. And where a law is inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution, as in Shrey in our constitution as section three, that law shall to the extent of its inconsistency, be declared null and void and of no effect, irrespective of where it emanates from. So that the Emirates can formulate a law that would deny somebody of his fair hearing and hinge it on the law passed by the Emirates or the Council of Chiefs or, or, or whatever. The law cannot stand because that law violates the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is so clear. He said that this law is supreme. And any other law which is inconsistent with the provisions of the law shall, to the extent of its inconsistency, be declared null and void. And again, freedom of movement, as contained in section um, 40, 42 of the Constitution, right there, made it that nobody has the right, you know, it's for section 40, uh, 42, nobody has the right to punish somebody to any place to determine somebody's movement. Every citizen of Nigeria is entitled to move freely throughout Nigeria All right. and to reside in any part of Nigeria thereof. Okay. So yeah. now you are banishing somebody to, to Nasarawa State, confining him to a particular place, that he will stay there. He will not come to Kano. You have restricted the movement within the whole Nigeria. All right, Joe, let, let me court. interject and uh, bring in our guest in the studio, Bernard, and to ask uh, um, his opinion. I'll come back to you in a bit, please. Um, cited in that suit is the Attorney General, 
of the Federation, as well as the direct, um, uh, DSS uh, director. Um, um, the impression generally has been that this was a state affair. How are they culpable? Why are they dragged into this case? Could you explain to us? Okay, um, you know security um, chiefly resides in the, the federal government. You know, we have a federal police force in Nigeria. So we have an inspector general of police who is in charge of policing in Nigeria. And so most all of our security architecture is, is centralized in Nigeria. And so that is why that is so, to answer your question. And like you heard, as at the time, in fact, Sanusi was forced out of the palace, if you heard what happened, right? That the commissioner of police and, um, the, the, um, and um, was, was present. Um, um, officials of the DSS were present. And that over 40 security operatives moved him um, to the initial town where he was. I think the local was there about in Nasserah State. And they drove for seven hours to get to that town before he was eventually relocated or moved for reasons best known to them. And so, well, we can rightly say that um, he is in custody, not just um, banishment, because if the, the, the police officers and the DSS officers and all of the security apparatus have not given armed support, because that is what it is, to the Kano state government, I do not think this situation would have been where it is today. And my learned colleague has spoken right, that banishment is not known to our law. Even if it is known to a law in Kano states, it is contrary to our constitution. Now, and the attorney general of the Federation is the chief law officer of the Federation. And he is under the executive arm of government as much as the inspector general of police and the heads of all of these security agencies who are all joined in that suit. And so it behoves on him to advise the Inspector General of Police, the Director of DSS, and all of the other his colleagues who are in the Executive Cabinet on the appropriate legal action to take, which is the fact that let this man be. This is not known to law. It runs contrary to our constitution. And so to be honest, if we had a fair society where law and order takes precedence, nobody has to go to court. We shouldn't be talking of detronement and banishment in the 21st century where the world is moving forward, you know. And so that is why so the inspector, the, the attorney general of the Federation, in fact, is at the center of this, of this if case. you ask me, because he has a duty of advising the heads of the security agencies in accordance with the laws of the land, which he is the chief law officer. Okay, okay. Joe, let me come back to you and ask about the um, involvement of SERAP now. They have written to the UN to ask them to investigate uh, the banishment of uh, the former emir of Kanu. Uh, do you expect any impact from this? Is this something that the UN should meddle in? Do they have any sort of influence at all? It, uh, for me, it has only to do with you. And that's, um, uh, in as much as I commend Sarah, uh, in all their uh, um, kind of determination to ensure that we have a very sane society, a very, a very civilized society, and a, a democratic society. But uh, writing the United Nations to intervene in a matter like this um, is a bit um, ridiculous. In the sense that we have already exhausted the legal apparatus available to us here in Nigeria. And, we, and there's no external force or influence involved on this issue. And, uh, and I've not even seen the president trying to act ultra virus, the law, where you can ask, okay, the president is trying to live above the law. The president is not trying to like submit himself to the law of the land. In that case, I might call external influence, call external kind of uh, support to put pressure on the president to abide by the laws of the land. So, but that issue has not arisen. So what is before us now is what our courts can handle. So what I believe Sanusi and his lawyer, Mamoudou, former uh, MBM uh, president, is his lawyer, he has, uh, he has promised to take proper legal action to redress uh, this uh, wrong done to his clients. For me, our court should be approached, and the court will give it judicial interpretation. And I believe our court will do justice to the matter, because the breach is so enormous and it's so clear and so obvious that his right has been trampled upon. And right, then we sir. have uh, express provisions from the constitution <laughs> that backed him up. So what we should do is just to proceed to court, seek judicial interpretation to what has been done to him, 
and call to make a pronouncement. All right, Joe, it. thank you very much. Uh, I'm afraid we have to stop now. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank and you so thank you to Bennett for coming on the news.